Hello, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm gonna start this segment by asking a rhetorical question, a question I already know the answer to, but I'll ask it anyway. Have any of you ever been in a situation that caused stress or anxiety or fear or all of the above? Yeah, of course. And I'm sure many of you are thinking, well, this is 2020, there's a lot of that going on and I would agree with you. But uh, I am reminded of a story that goes way back into Genesis, um, Genesis 32, and regarding uh, Jacob and his brother Esau. And I'm sure you're familiar with, with Jacob. He spent his entire life being a trickster, using deceit, getting what he wanted. In fact, he earned his birthright from his father Isaac, uh, a birthright that was owed to Esau by using trickery and deceit. In fact, that deception and loss of birthright infuriated Esau, and Esau being the bigger brother, they were twins, but he was the, the, the big hunter, where Jacob was more of the con artist, uh, where made Esau incredibly angry uh, to the point where Jacob fled, and he fled for 20 years. And in that 20 years, he did become very rich, and after 20 years, uh, he did plan to reunite with his brother, uh, Esau. So before heading back to his, his homeland and, and his kinship, uh, Jacob sent scouts ahead or, or messengers ahead to Esau, bringing gifts and letting him know that he would like to meet. So Jacob was preparing, trying, trying to ease, ease the tension, trying to let him know he's coming in peace. Well, these servants came back and, and mentioned that Esau was assembling an army of about 400 men and was coming to to Jacob. Well, of course, this made Jacob all the more fearful, all the more stressed, um, that he turns to God in prayer. So in this prayer, Jacob acknowledges God for um, all that God has provided him. Um, in fact, he, he mentions that he crossed the Jordan with only a staff, and now I have become two camps. So and then Jacob continues to ask God to deliver Jacob from Esau's wrath. So <clears throat> Jacob then sends even more gifts, a long line of gifts to, to Esau to try, and do, to try to appease his brother. So he's still up to his old, old ways, trying to, I wouldn't say weasel his way out, but to try to find an alternative to fighting, especially when there's 400 men headed your way. Um, and after sending those gifts, he then sends all his loved ones away. He doesn't want them to, to be hurt, to be captured, killed, whatever. So Jacob is all alone at night. And during this night, a man suddenly comes out of the wilderness and wrestles with Jacob. And this was an all night wrestling match. Nobody appears to be winning. Nobody appears to be losing. And at first light, uh, the man saw that he did not prevail um, and then touched Jacob's hip. And his hip went out of socket, incapacitating him. So obviously at this point, and we know that this man is God. And at this point, Jacob understands that this is God. Um, and then the man asks to be released. And Jacob says, I'm you know, holding on to, to God. He says, I'm not releasing you, and, and instead asks for a blessing. So just like Peter in last week's lesson from Pastor Jed, uh, Jacob is given another chance and um, is then blessed by God. God does give him a blessing and changes his name from Jacob to Israel, which means strives or wrestles or struggles with God. So, and during this whole fight, because this is a physical fight, Jacob is not able to use his trickery or, or uh, his deceit in any way. And uh, so at this point, uh, after receiving the blessing, Jacob does put all of his faith into God and, and, in, and has a renewed confidence um, in his meeting with his brother. So instead of sending more gifts or trying to uh, correct things in his own way. He sees his, his brother Esau coming and he runs out and the two of them embrace. So um, 
and there is no bloodshed at all. So how does that relate to us? So how, how do you respond to these stresses and these difficult situations? Do you try to make the problem go away like Jacob did by sending out these gifts? Or do you use trickery? Or do you put your faith in God who always fulfills his promises? I know that's not an all, always an easy thing to do. Um, but time and time again throughout scripture, it is shown that God never falls back on his promises. So, um, so in short, uh, this section of scripture shows us how we can, how we tend to formulate our own plan of how to tackle, uh, obstacles that get in our way, much like Jacob had and, uh, how these attitudes or how these plans or our own attitudes can cause us to struggle with God, um, as we saw with Jacob. So it is only when we turn to God that, and put our faith in God that we are fully able to overcome these obstacles. Um, so please, please remember that as we continue through the rest of 2020 and beyond. I know there's still a lot of things out there, um, but remember God is always in control. And, uh, um, you know, it is only through our faith in him and power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ that we are able to, to, to get through this. Thank you for listening and God bless you.